All right, guys, so today I'm going to be walking you through my tank nomad build it is for both PvP and PvE, and it's specifically designed for solo players. Uh, this is for all you agents out there that don't have a group to play with. It's very, very effective. It's extremely fun to use. It offers multiple lives, can keep you alive in a lot of situations when you normally would go down, uh, and just genuinely offers a great avenue of play for solo players. It centers around four-piece nomad, revival on death, uh, health on kill, and various other mechanics to be extremely tanky, regenerate a lot of health, and overall offer a fun experience. I'll begin by talking about all my different pieces of gear, and I'll start with the backpack of the Nomad. Now, backpacks are fairly straightforward right now. In the current metagame, you want armor as a major attribute at all times, and then you want ammo capacity as the minor attribute. Uh, that is fairly forgiving. You can roll off ammo capacity for something else, but this is typically what you're going to want to run uh, for both PvE and PvP. Now, I have a high stamina roll here that plays into the tank aspect. You are going to run two pieces of firearms gear. That's my chest and my mask for this build. And then three pieces of stamina gear. That's my backpack, my gloves, and my knee pads for this build. And then the four-piece Nomad bonus is the most important part. Uh, you will be checking that off. Path of the Nomad. When receiving fatal damage, you are instead healed to full health. Can occur once every four minutes. That essentially means that your health pool is doubled once every four minutes in PvP encounters as well. This is a very potent solo player build. And paired with the signature, will keep you alive an additional time so this is something that will be very very forgiving in a lot of encounters keep you alive and allow you to reposition or get out of there again highly recommended for solo play the two-piece bonus also plays into it very very efficiently with 15 percent health on kill and augmented with a little bit additional on my gear which i'll talk about in a moment uh, you are going to be regenerating a lot of health every time you kill an enemy and there are abundant and weak enemies in the dark zone especially so this does have a lot of utility there uh, and 15% of a very large health pool is a significant amount of health. So you can use this to very, very uh, powerful effect, both in PvP and in PvE. Next up, we have this Holster of the Nomad, a very straightforward item in any build. The Holster is always going to roll armor as a major attribute, and then look for the highest possible main stat rolls in all three categories. Uh, 1252 is a nice roll on stamina. I would prefer 1250 above that in all three categories. 1165 is a very bad electronics roll, but the Holster gets the job done. The main thing is just having armor in the major attribute slot and a high stamina roll. Next up, we have our Knee Pads of the Nomad, and these are also a fairly straightforward item. Uh, the number one thing that you're going to be looking for is armor in the major attribute slot. Outside of that, I have the highest possible stamina roll that I could find, again, feeding into this tank build aspect. Uh, and for minor attributes, nothing really matters except for the enemy armor damage. Since it is a minor attribute, you do not have to sacrifice anything to gain this. So 12% enemy armor damage on your knee pads is essential to increasing your DPS output and allowing you to trade with other builds, while maintaining your super tank status where you can regener regenerate to full health uh, fairly frequently during fights. Last up for the Nomad gear, we have our mask. Now, it's important to note that there's a lot of different combinations for the mask that are effective. I have rolled fairly high in the firearms category at 1230. That's decent. Over 1200 is my target, like I always say. Uh, I've rolled skill power in the major attribute slot, which is nice. I would prefer to have critical hit chance. I don't really feel that skill power does anything additional for the build. However, it does not hurt in the slightest. And then for the minor attributes, enemy armor damage is the most critical component here. You could swap out the major attribute for something like health on kill. Uh, you could roll something else like critical hit chance. The mask is a little bit variable. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But I think that the most critical component is a high main stat roll and enemy armor damage in the minor attribute slot. Moving on to my two high end pieces, it is important to note that I am running the Barrett's Bulletproof vest but this item is not essential to the build i don't want to deter people from running this build it is just as strong if you don't have the barrett's bulletproof vest this does feed into the toughness aspect the barrett's bulletproof vest is an item that i like a great deal but it is not something that you absolutely have to have you can actually switch it out and run a nomad chest piece and run the specialized backpack you could run a nomad chest piece and run the tenacious mask there are a lot of alternatives or you could run the rapid chest piece or the vigorous chest piece both of which are very strong but since I do have this item equipped, I will talk about it and why I've rolled what I have. I have a decent firearms roll. I would prefer over 1,200, but I wasn't lucky enough to get that. For major attributes, I have health and armor. That's the premier combination for increasing your toughness, and I would recommend that, especially if you're going to be participating in PvP in the Dark Zone. The current meta is very forgiving to you if you have more toughness and more stamina, and the base health increase on the chest is actually competitive now. Armor is essential. You absolutely need armor in your major attribute slot on your chest piece, and then ammo capacity in tandem with your backpack is going to mean you're going to hold enough bullets to be able to excel through any PvE or PvP content that you like to uh, without running out of bullets to fire from your gun so it's very important to roll ammo capacity in at least either your chest piece or your backpack for the last gear item we have these gunslinger gloves with savage now it's also important to note that these gloves can be switched out you can switch to uh, a set of nomad gloves and then run a different high end such as specialized or tenacious 
uh, even the accomplished knee pads if you're going to be using this primarily in pve there's a lot of versatility here but i have opted to run the savage gloves because they increase my dps and because i have a pretty fantastic role on these i have 1271 stamina which feeds into the the tank aspect of the build uh, you know 1272 i believe is max roll so this is a very very uh, large amount of main stat that i've acquired here the, the Savage Talent with 7% increased critical hit chance to targets out of cover is valuable because a lot of people, especially in PvP, which is going to be my main use for the build, though it does cross-perform in PvE, just to make sure that everyone knows that, 7% uh, increased critical hit chance is going to be a big deal. Then I have rolled critical hit chance on the major attribute slot on the gloves, assault rifle damage, and health on kill. You can switch out health on kill for critical hit damage if you'd like to. I like the additional health on kill. It makes it very rewarding to kill a squishy NPC and can actually offer me an alternative way to boost my health pool if both my heals are on cooldown or my heal rotation has been blown early. But assault rifle damage is the actual critical component of these gloves. That's a large chunk of main rifle damage and you do need to roll, whether using an SMG or an assault rifle, the main weapon damage of your preferred gun type on your gloves and then have a high, as high a main stat as possible. Moving on to my weapons, I will talk about both my primary and secondary, but the most important component here is the lightweight M4 and one specific talent on it. Now, the most important talent on your gun is going to be Unforgiving. Now, in a lot of builds, I always talk about how Unforgiving is a strong PvP talent. However, with this build in particular, since it's giving you multiple chances to get to one health segment and actually get down to zero and then regenerate, there's going to be multiple times that you are guaranteed to proc the 25% additional uh, weapon damage. So Unforgiving is extremely powerful in this build. You're going to reliably and frequently be operating with that 25% increase. Now, outside of that, Responsive and Brutal are fantastic. I would prefer to actually have responsive, unforgiving, and then competent in the third slot, which would pair very well with my booster shot uh, and increase my weapon damage by a percentage even further. However, Brutal is a nice talent to have, and this is a very well-rolled gun. Now, this assault rifle type, it has very good enemy armor damage, all assault rifles do, it has very high RPM. This archetype, the M4s or the LVOACs, are currently the strongest guns in the game, and I would recommend picking one up and using it. However, if you don't want to, there are plenty of viable alternatives. An MP7 with the right talents can also be very strong. I have Brutal, Destructive, and Responsive here. Again, I would prefer Unforgiving. That is the most critical weapon talent to have with this build, since you will reliably be proccing it very frequently. Uh, but this MP7 can also do damage, however, I would have to switch out my gun uh my my gloves to have the actual relevant gun damage of this type so to have smg damage there's a lot of different small components that you can switch again the build is very versatile it cross performs in pvp and pve and it's something that you can switch around to have the weapon type of your choice to quickly cover all of my gear and weapon mods it's fairly straightforward since i am running a tank composition i'm going to run stamina with armor in every single mod slot save one and that is only to activate my gun town so in my vest I have two stamina armor mods. In my mask, I have one stamina armor mod. In my knee pads, I have one stamina armor mod. And then I have pulse critical hit chance. This helps the build cross perform in PvE. Uh, it does allow you to have more burst damage. And when it does proc on players, your pulse is going to be more effective. So it's something that can get a lot of utility, but is not essential to the build. Uh, the performance mods, again, are extremely variable. A lot of people are going to switch these out for other things. And then in my backpack, I do have one firearms mod with armor. Now, this is just to check off the requirements to activate brutal and responsive, which are not free talents. Uh, they do cost 4790 to activate so i did have to put in one firearms mod with armor in order to get those active but then everything after that was specced into stamina uh, now for the performance mods in my backpack i have first aid self heal this is the most recommended mod to run since your skill power is quite low i am not running the specialized backpack uh, this is going to increase the amount that my booster shot can heal and thus increase my survivability. So I recommend running four first aid self heal. Uh, but if you don't have four or if you want to increase your burst damage, you can opt into something like pulse critical hit chance, pulse critical hit damage, uh, etc, etc. Again, it's very variable. You can switch out performance mods for whatever augments your preferred skill that you are running at the time. For my weapon mods, there's only a couple things that are extremely important to cover, and I'll gloss over the rest. So we have magazine size, critical hit chance, rate of fire. That's the optimal combination on your magazine, and that's the most important attachment for raising DPS. Outside of that, you can run as much headshot damage as you can possibly find, or critical hit chance. As you can see here, 17.5% headshot damage, 3% critical hit chance. And then on my scope, I have more critical hit chance and 6% headshot damage. Uh, you can also find one with headshot damage in the primary attribute slot, but it's very important to increase crit chance and headshot damage at every possible possible turn, and then critical hit damage on your underbarrel.
Mousing over my character sheet rather quickly, you can see that I have a high base health pool, and that is because the Nomad 4-piece bonus does not discriminate. No, regardless of what your health pool is, when you would take Fatal Damage, you go back to full, which means the higher your base health pool, the better that bonus becomes. Moving on from there, we can see that my weapon damage and critical hit chance are competitive. I have high headshot damage at about 111%, while nothing that you're going to you know, define the build, nothing that's going to change the Dark Zone, that is something that is going to drastically increase your DPS output. For combat, you can see I have 19% health on kill, that is quite powerful, 40% enemy armor damage, again it cross performs now in PvP. Uh, moving on to skills and survivability, just to check all the different things that people may want to see, uh, all the different analytical and numerical points of the build. We have high toughness, we have a high max health, and then we have armor at 52.82%. Now this mitigates a large amount of damage. Enemy armor shred though is going to be a factor, uh, so it's not going to completely protect you. However, since you have rolled armor on all your gear pieces and all your mods, this is competitive. I would prefer something closer to 56%, uh, but I do have you know some lacking rolls that aren't as high as they could be. Uh, and then all the rest of my attributes down here, uh, I will show them just in case people want to check. Alright, so today I'm going to be demonstrating this build in the Dark Zone, and I will be using it in PvP. However, again, like I've said a few times previously, this build does cross-perform. It has a lot of potential in PvE. When you drop an NPC or rifle button enemy agent, you actually have that 19% health on kill, and you have a very high base health pool, which makes it so that you can regenerate very reliably from a lot of different sources. Another reason why this build is so strong is because since you are face trading with a lot of enemy agents and then reliably proccing Unforgiving and Strike Back, well then being kept alive and regenerated to full health because of Nomad or because of your signature, uh, you're able to go through multiple rotations in any encounter where you have all of your different bonuses working together and then can pop more booster shots, etc. because of Strike Back. There's a lot of different things that feed into each other. Uh, it's more than I can explain right now. You can use timing aspects to pop your Barrett's Bulletproof bonus. Uh, you can do a lot of competitive damage. You can out-trade a lot of different builds as well. And you can keep yourself alive in a lot of fights. A lot of people have asked me for solo play builds or for solo play uh, you know, content and videos that they want me to produce. This is my answer to pretty much all of those questions. If you are going to be by yourself, this is highly recommended build. This is extremely potent, extremely powerful, keeps you alive. Uh, sometimes when I actually got jumped by teams of four in the dark zone, I was able to get away and reposition because they would get me down to zero, then my signature would auto proc. I'd go back up to half health and I'd have a residual uh, heal over time active on my character. They would again melt me down to zero, then my Nomad would proc, I would jump again back up to full health, um, and I was able to get away. It's something that you can use and, you know, should give you a security blanket in the Dark Zone. A lot of people have been looking for that, a lot of people are looking uh, at ways to counter the current DPS builds, and this is my answer, I think this is a reliable way to do that. Everything just works so well together, uh, that character did lag, so I don't feel great about killing him there. I probably would have had an extended fight had he not lagged and not allowed me to land as many headshots as I was able to. Um, but someone who has better aim than I do, again, headshots are going to be very powerful. You can out-trade pretty much any other build out there uh, if they do just square up, aim down sights, and aim at your head. Uh, which is what happens frequently on console. So again, to speak about the nature of the build in terms of console versus PC, uh, this build is something that I designed while playing on Xbox One. Which means that I am oftentimes aiming down sights, trading with players in a way that's typical for a console controller user. Uh, however, this build does also perform on PC. Since you will be hip firing and moving in circles when you would take lethal damage, uh, all the mechanics are still proccing the right way. You're still getting unforgiving bonuses, you're still going to get uh, strike back to activate. So regardless of whether or not you're hip firing or aiming down sights, whether or not you're trading with an enemy uh, while not moving, or moving around and dodging frequently and strafing, uh, you're going to get all the different bonuses of this build. has a lot of survivability. Again, it's the most tanky build I think that I've ever produced, not because of the toughness meter stats, but because of the fact that you have three lives, that you can just go through this rotation. And when one bonus isn't active, the other one probably is. Uh, as long as you're not getting into rapid PvP encounters constantly, uh, then there is a downtime between when you can regenerate your bar from lethal damage to full health. As long as you're you know, having buffer periods of time, you are going to have one of those bonuses active in pretty much every fight. Now there, I did go down. I think it's important to show my deaths, uh, but it is a reliable build that allows a solo player to have a lot of utility, to survive a lot of damage, uh, and to have a lot more fun in the Dark Zone. It's not really fun if you instantly get killed by every agent that you see, uh, with this build, that will not happen. With this build, it actually directly counters that effect. So you're not going to get ganked as much. When you do, you have more forgiving mechanics that are going to help you get away. Uh, overall, highly recommended, again, for solo players 
and for deterring rogues. If someone would shoot you in the back, if you were trying to clear a landmark and someone comes up behind you and shoots you, uh, it's going to be extremely difficult for them to drop you because by the time they've actually taken your health bar to zero, since you are a tank to begin with, you're probably aware of the situation. Then when you do hit zero, you regenerate again, and by then you've turned on them and you're ready to fight, and you do have another full heal or uh, you know regeneration effect because of the four-piece nomad in your back pocket, uh, which means that you can do a lot of damage to them and often win those PvP encounters where they're trying to jump you. So again, highly recommended. Uh, there's not much more gameplay here. As you can see, when you do trade and you have your bonuses, you get a lot of weapon damage. Um, it has competitive DPS to any other build in the game. has better survivability than pretty much any other Alpha Bridge build that I've seen to date. And other builds such as, you know, Banshee, uh, Lone Star, etc. This is one that I'm really happy with. I never thought I would like Nomad as much as I do right now. I will be using this on the live streams uh, for a while to come. It does actually have an impact on your, on your team. It's not an entirely selfish gear set because what it does allow you to do is bait face trades and bait people into shooting you. Since you are so tanky, you do have so much health and you do have so many regeneration factors available, uh, you can bait entire enemy teams into focusing you and then live through that damage. Uh, it's something that has a lot of utility. So it requires a little bit of an adjustment to play style, at least for me, but I'm really happy that I've discovered it and started to run it and I'm really, really happy to bring it to YouTube. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you want to support the channel, please check out the links below. Check out our Facebook and our Discord and have a nice night.